All right, in today's activity, what we're going to do is we're going to look at two processes, and you're going to tell me if they're chemical or physical changes. The first process we're going to look at is making rock candy. The second process we're going to look at is the mixing of baking soda and vinegar. If you follow the other links in this lab folder on Blackboard, you'll find instructions on how to do both of these. Both of these things that you're going to see me do here are things that you can do for some activity points. If you don't want to do them, then you have to sit here and watch the rest of my video. Well, even if you do want to do them, you still have to sit here and watch the rest of my video because you'll never know when I'm going to drop a keyword. All right, the first thing we're going to do is make some rock candy. Let me stress right off the bat something really important here. Ah. This is not a procedure to follow, right? I've included links to actual procedures. If you're going to try this at home, in addition to making sure you wear safety goggles, make sure you're following the instructions from one of the websites, right, that I linked to. Not a procedure. That having been said here, let's watch and see what I do in the lab in order to make some rock candy. At the end of this process, one of the questions you're going to be asked is whether or not making the process of making rock candy is a physical process or a chemical process. So let's take a look. Maybe we'll take a look here. Oops, wrong tool. Hello, we're going to make some rock candy. To do this, I've got my boiling hot water here, and I have two cups of it. Now, one of the wonderful things about water is it has a high affinity for sugar. You can actually dissolve much more, a much larger volume of sugar in water than the volume of the water. I have two cups of water, but I actually have four cups of sugar here and I'm going to just stir it into my boiling water. Now at home, I'd have to do it the old-fashioned hard way with a spoon. Um, I'm in a chemistry lab, so I'm going to use an automatic stirrer here to facilitate this mixing. let that portion get purely dissolved here. And it's really, really important when you're doing this that you let your solution go to clear. You have to get a clear solution. You want all that sugar thoroughly, thoroughly dissolved. See how nice and clear it's becoming there? All right, it's pretty clear, so I'm going to add some more sugar to it. See how it's slowing down because it's almost becoming a paste here. Oh, whoops, my stir bar also got off center there. Should speed up here in a second. Another thing that's important is I'm using purified water. And that will hopefully prevent crystal formation and, and help my solution go clear a little bit sooner. I am going to have to do things the old-fashioned way. It looks like I am going to need to use a spoon here. 
here, so to speak. My beaker is hot because I have it to the boiling. My water was boiling before I began dumping the sugar in there. So I am wearing an amazing of glove. There's my auto stirrer. Let's see if we can't get it to snap back to where it's supposed to be. And let it take over. There we go. And hopefully I will have a clear solution here in a second. The more sugar you can get dissolved in the water, the better your candy will wind up being. It's also really, really important um, that you have no crystals left. And right now I have a lot of crystals. So I'm gonna let it stir for a little bit longer and I'll actually spare you um, doing that in real time. So we'll, we'll switch to time lapse here. Frogs. Everybody write down frogs. I hope everybody's writing down frogs. Everybody's writing down the word frogs. And now for the miracle of time-lapse photography, we see the sugar solution becoming clear and we can see me prepping some things in the background. But even that gets kind of old after a while, so let's even fast forward even farther ahead. All right, um, we're out of time lapse again because as you can see, my solution is now really, really nice and clear. Um, you can't really see any particles. You see some, perhaps, some little um, bubbles of water there, but it's more or less now particle free because all the sugar has dissolved. So now what I need to do is I need to provide a surface on which to reform our crystals. We want to form rock candy, right? There are two ways you can do this. Um, you can take a piece of string, put a weight on the end, any weight will do, a washer, a paper clip. Um, I'm using a gator clip today on the end of the string to make sure it hangs down into your solution. And what you're going to do is you're going to pour some of that sugar solution into there. Now, I want my um, rock candy to be nice and colorful, so I'm going to add some color to it. Being a Cardinal fan, I am going to add some red. So I've added some food coloring to it. Um, instructions online will tell you you can add flavoring. Be very, very cautious should you add flavoring to it. Some, flame, some um, flavors such as vanilla or brandy are flammable and if you add them over a heat source you could actually catch yourself on fire. So avoid, I would recommend you avoid adding flavoring. Um, now I have my sugar solution. I have a couple containers here. Can you see them? Yeah, a couple containers there with my weights. I'm also just going to add a couple where I've got a stick going. One thing I can do to help promote my formation is I can pre-sugar my string and I can pre-sugar my pencil. I am going to take my string and I'm going to wet it with some water. Do, 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 do. Wetting my string with water. Exciting. I'm going to take a little bit of sugar, sprinkle it on that weight. I'm going to do the same thing for one of my pencils over here. I'm going to take my pencil, water it down, and I'm going to take some granular sugar and, well, come on, my pencil doesn't want to stay wet here. It works better if you had wood splints, but I couldn't find where they were hidden in our lab, and I'm making a big old mess. All right.
Do the same thing for my other string. Add a little bit of free sugar to it. Uh, now I have problems there. I definitely did not want to do that. Don't want sh solid sugar going on the bottom of any of my containers if I can avoid it. Because if you get sugar on the bottom of your containers, you'll actually have your crystals form early. So just a second. Just a quick reminder about a couple things. First of all, you don't want to eat anything that's been on a pencil. It wouldn't be sanitary. Never eat anything made in a chemistry lab. Lab. What I'm doing here is I'm showing you my procedure so that you can answer the questions that I'm going to ask you in the post-lab quiz. If you're going to do this at home, follow the instructions um, from one of the website links. All right, your sugar solution is still extremely, extremely hot. So you have to be really, really careful when you're handling it. Therefore, I'm going to use some Amazing Of Gloves. If you do use the Amazing Of Gloves, keep in mind they are heat resistance, not waterproof. If you get hot water or a hot solution on these, these will actually, in a way, make the burning a little bit worse. So be very careful. Kind of like gremlins, don't get them wet. Uh, speaking of not getting them wet, I did exactly that. Uh, my hand is burning just a little bit there, just a second. Now I'm pouring it into my other containers here. I'm also going to do one other thing here. If you've ever watched the TV show Breaking Bad, you know that it was about meth and that they used a lot of what they called the clear blue meth in the show, which was a crystal. Well, obviously TV producers aren't going to go around making meth. So how did they make the meth in the show? The meth they used in the show was actually just rock candy. Um, and they made it just like we're making it now. But instead of pouring it into a container like that, they poured it in a sheet here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm pouring it into a shallow pan. And quick note, for the show Breaking Bad, they that alone for a, a couple mixture. days now. Both uh, my beakers and my pans, and in a couple days, I should have some very nice rock candy formed. And I'll be back to show you the results in a couple days. Fortunately, I won't even use time lapse for that. I'll just stop the video and come back in a couple days. See the link in Blackboard to actually find instructions to make um, the artificial prop meth they made in the shows. Also, now would be a really, really good time to write down salamanders. Why doesn't everybody write down salamanders? Everybody write down salamanders. A quick reminder to never eat anything made in the lab. That having been said, I poured my sugar solutions into my beakers, and I actually had to wet, let them wait for a good period of time before I could see any results. Ideally I would have waited two weeks, didn't really have that time frame. So what we're looking at is about a week. And what you'll see is I got really really good results for one of my strings there. Uh, a couple things to notice while we're looking at this beaker right here is I'm going to, need to change the color of my pointer just a second. If you look at the beaker you'll see you have a crust around there. One of the reasons I don't have bigger crystals is in order to get this crystal made, 
the water has to all evaporate out. And what I had happening is I had sugar crystallizing on the surface of my solution, preventing the water from evaporating. So I had to come over here and continually punch through that little crystal layer of sugar crystals in order for my water to evaporate. If I'd been more diligent about that, like doing it every couple hours, I'd have some nice big crystals here, even after only a short period of time, even, even only after that few days that I let it sit there. And this was really my best crystal. Um, that was my biggest crystal for my pencil was pretty pathetic. Didn't really give it a good nucleation site. Here, a couple quick notes about this beaker is you'll, you're going to see in a second that I'm going to have a terribly difficult time removing the um, string from this beaker. This beaker got a drop of sugar or two, solid sugar on the bottom of it. And when you have one sugar molecule, it attracts others. So my crystals began forming on the bottom of my beaker instead of my string. So I'm actually going to have pretty pathetic crystals here on the string in a second. But if you look, you cannot see the layer of crystals there along the bottom. I had quite a few crystals, perhaps some of the best crystal growth along there. So let's take a look. Pulling, pulling, oh, it's stuck, it's stuck. Pull, pull, there we go. And once again, I could have gotten bigger crystals if I'd done a better job evaporating. Whoops, whoops, going too fast here, just a second. Let's rewind just a little bit. And there's my pan, here's my pan of crystals. Remember, I poured some into the pan, and I've got a whole field of crystals here. As I noted in the um, last video, if you actually wanted to make clear crystals, you would need to use a little bit of current corn syrup in your mixture, and I included a link on how to do that. If I was to taste any of these, these crystals, what I would find is they tasted exactly like sugar. So I placed sugar in water, and after I placed my sugar in the water, I poured it into pans. I let water evaporate, and then I was left with these crystals. And these crystals taste like sugar. Of course, you should never eat anything made in the chemistry lab. But that concludes the first part of our experiment. One last thing. Write down the word newt. Write down the word newt. 